Let's bring you another top story today. A damning report by MPs has accused Sports Direct, you know who they are, of failing to treat its employees as human beings. Note, this is 2016, failing to treat their employees as human beings. The Business Innovation and Skills Committee says working practices in the company's warehouse and shops are, and I quote, closer to a Victorian workhouse than a high street retailer. Ian Wright is the chairman of the committee. The whole culture and the whole practice of making sure that you know workers are on zero hours contracts very insecure employment they don't know if they're going to get paid the following day let alone the next week um, and then the bullying and intimidation that goes on absolutely unacceptable the committee says an extremely disturbing spotlight has been shone on sports direct with some staff saying they were promised permanent contracts in exchange for sexual favors other evidence pointed to serious health and safety breaches the company's run by mike ashley who appeared in person at the committee hearing last month i've got nothing to hide Come on, will you find it 100% perfect? Of course you won't. You will find things out that I obviously don't know are going on or happening. I have no issues with this as an ongoing process and I, could, I prefer it to be totally independent. Sports Direct told the BBC it would study the contents of the committee's report very carefully. It said it is their policy to treat all its employees with dignity and respect. Reports include uh, um, information of, of staff being timed when they went to the loo, of a woman giving birth in the lavatories there, and as you hear, sexual favours in return for permanent contracts. Uh, joining us on the programme is Luke Primarolo. Luke's the regional officer at Unite, the union which represents permanent workers at Sports Direct's depot and head office in Derbyshire. Luke, good morning to you. Good morning, Vanessa. How much did you know about any of this, Luke? Well, we've been campaigning for over a year now around the issues at Sports Direct, trying to highlight these issues. So we very much welcome this report today, which identifies all of those issues that we've been bringing to the fore. OK, list, now, list them for us, Luke. Obviously, you say you've been working on this for a year to try and bring them to the fore. What were the key issues that concerned you at the Unite Union uh, about the goings on at Sports Direct? Well... The key issue stems from uh, a workforce, particularly at Shirebrook, who is the majority of are employed as agency workers. Yeah. Now, as agency workers, what this means is, in reality, they don't have any recourse to justice mm -hmm. because if you challenge anything, mm -hmm. there is a potential that you can lose your employment. Yeah. What that then means, if there isn't that kind of check and balance, is it allows bad practice and exploitation to filter in. For example? So, for example, we have a situation at Shirebrook where there is a strike system. So if you are an agency worker, mm -hmm. um, you have 36 different identified points where you can receive a strike, including spending too long in the toilet, including excessive chatting, including taking a day off sick. What this essentially means yes. is people are very, very scared. They're scared to take a day off sick, Vanessa. I now, know. I, I mean, I, I honestly, Luke, cannot believe we're having this conversation in this day and age. Not, I mean, I mean, you know, post-industrial revolution, that was the whole point of the unions forming, so that workers could be representative and, uh, represented, have human rights and, and, you know, fulfil themselves in the workplace without being abused or exploited. This is, quite, you know, horrifying stuff, isn't it? It is, but now is the time to get it sorted out. I mean, what we want to do is, is work with Sports Direct now to address these issues and find the solutions to dealing with them. And for us, this all stems from moving people off precarious work into fixed hour permanent contracts. If you are on a fixed hour permanent contract, yes. the strike system cannot exist. Mm -hmm. So, so effectively, what you really want to see, I don't let me put words into your mouth, but correct me if this is wrong, but you want to see the end of these zero hours contracts which don't add up to a ton of beans. They're just, they're just completely, and they can be ripped up at any second and they don't give people the ability to budget. People don't know what money's coming in for food. They don't know what money's coming in for rent. And it makes them nervous and worried and highly dependent on this, this, this inhumane way of working. Is that right to say? 
No, that's completely correct. I mean, Good. in New Zealand, they've now banned zero hours. So yeah. I think there's also an issue to the employers as well. Because when we had the select committee, Mr. Ashley seemed generally, genuinely shocked about some of the issues that were being raised with him. Well, he's not going to be able to hear about those issues if people are too scared to raise it through the system because mm. they think it may cost them their employment which is why they come and they speak to us, which is why we're now campaigning on this, to get it resolved. But by no means do we think they're the only employer doing this. And no. actually, it needs the government to look a bit closer at this and the real work out there and put in some legislation to protect people. OK, serious question for you. Are we partly responsible for this? We the customers, we the public, we who so enjoy getting a pair of trainers at a knockdown price. And it's not just trainers. We enjoy getting everything at a knockdown price, whether it's a saucepan or a pair of shoes. We love it. And we flock to buy these cheap goods. Do we owe it to our fellow human beings to treat them as human beings and think, well, my goodness, they can't possibly be paid a decent wage if these trainers are so cheap. So therefore, I won't buy them. I've got to kind of factor in the human quotient of this. Should we be doing that? Is it partly our responsibility? I think it's partly all of our responsibility, yes. Of course, with cheap goods, there is a cost to that, and it's a human cost. But also what we have to recognise is it is a business model that will expand because other competitors will have to adopt the same business model. So it's only not just about thinking about our fellow human beings here, it's thinking about what kind of employment our children are going to have. I'm just thinking about people being timed when they went to the loo. And I'm just wondering how something like that is allowed to happen. I'm wondering who thinks that's okay, who, who, who sanctions it, where it's written down, you know, so-and-so spent, you know, one minute, 30 seconds, and so-and-so spent four minutes, and whether it's a lady's time of the month or whether somebody's taken ill or, or whatever the heck is going on. I mean, this is inhumane, this is degrading, it's embarrassing, it's shaming in every way for anybody who would think that that was a way to treat workers, isn't it? Well, I don't disagree with that at all, Vanessa, but now is the time to get these things sorted out. And that's why we're very much welcome sitting down with Sports Direct and resolving this. And from our perspective, it's getting people put on fixed hour permanent contracts where these things cannot happen. And I would say to your listeners out there, if they are experiencing similar kinds of treatment, they must get in touch with us. They must get in touch because that's the only way we can start to deal with these things that are happening in our world of work. OK, final question. And I know you have to be diplomatic because I know your role is a kind of negotiating role and you don't want to stick your foot in it before you've started. I get that completely. But is it really possible that Mike Ashley, the multimillionaire owner of this company, could not know that this type of thing was going on? Could genuinely not know how little his staff were being paid, how precarious and unpleasant their life was, how insecure it was? And as you say how downright terrified they were to make a fuss about it in case they earned nothing whatsoever. Well, only Mike Ashley can answer that question, Vanessa, but all I can say is I was in the select committee mm. when he gave his evidence and he did appear to be genuinely shocked at certain points. That's not me defending him, but it comes back to the point of if you have a system where people are scared, they're not going to raise the issues up and that is a risk to any business. Thank you very much for talking to us. Luke Primarolo there from the Unite Union.